What's up guys? Welcome back to the BTO Sports YouTube channel. Uh, this is our final video for the 250 build. It was so much fun, but Red Bull straight rhythm has came and went and uh, We had a really really good time So everybody who followed the build everybody who came up to us at the pit and shook our hands and, and said how much They enjoyed the videos. Thank you from our bottom of our hearts. That means the world to us We really really had a blast building this bike had even more fun at the uh, actual event and at the pit party and all that stuff with you guys but I figured for this video since the events already gone and uh, There's nothing really left to do on the bike We'd get a little bit caught up on the bike and now the actual event went down. Towards the end of the series, we kind of got a little stray there. Not because of uh, lack of motivation or anything like that. We were just stressing on time. We had uh, a very limited amount of time, especially in the last like 10 days, to get this thing up and running and then ride it and test it and tune it and all that stuff, which we really didn't have enough time for, unfortunately. But we made the best of what we could and uh, definitely had a good time at the event. So. Without further ado, we'll go over the bike now and then uh, talk about the event after. All right, so I'm not exactly sure how much I explained with the bike um, in the later process of the, the build, so I'll kind of go over everything. So as you guys know, we had started off with planning to run this red front end, uh, front plate and uh, front fender, and then we ended up switching to the white. Um, the reason for that was because I had a, I had a meeting with uh, Johnny O and Troy Lee, and we went over bunch of pictures, a bunch of different themes that, that Johnny had ran in his career. And um, I don't know, I just uh, was super inspired. I tried to just kind of shut up and let those guys talk because they're two legends of the sport and really being there was uh, a little bit um, humbling for me and and uh, definitely left me like kind of speechless a little bit, but it was like a two hour meeting, learned a ton about Johnny and, and uh, Troy and their whole history and uh, about the Mugen Honda. Um, before I had ever, plan to ride as Johnny we had already sent everything off to get black so we kind of tried to I don't know there was kind of a a lot of cooks in the kitchen type of say but um we had already set it set everything out to go get to um, get powder coated and anodized black so we were kind of stuck with what we had so Mikey and I came up with the idea to kind of I guess give our version of what we think the Mugen Honda would look like nowadays maybe uh, maybe not so much black they would use, but we had kind of already, you know, like I said, committed to the black theme. But we, w we went ahead and threw the white front end on there just to kind of emulate some of Johnny O's style from back in the day. Obviously, back then they had all white plastics, the whole, um, I think the engine was red or something like that. I think they would even powder coat the pipe red. You know, we had what we had, so we ran with this and definitely came out killer. Um, the kite hubs and uh, DID wheels that W hooked us up with, we tried to match those best we could with the fork legs. And, or fork tubes I should say and did a pretty good job at that I think the bike overall looks really cool and and different and that's kind of what we were going for um, We didn't end up getting the, the shot coated. I know I had talked about that in previous videos, but uh, after kind of discussing with Mikey and um, Gilmore from KYB we went ahead and left it this this stock uh, color that it had come with um, which actually turned out really cool. I think it kind of like pops in the middle of the bike and kind of stands out a little bit But yeah, that's kind of the whole reason for, behind that graphics came out insane guys at moto cuts hooked us up We went with a flat black finish um, Not I mean they kind of show a little bit especially black kind of shows a little bit from from the wear and tear but um, Just wanted to kind of switch it up and be a little different um, The back fender you can kind of see is pretty cool, but with no uh, wear and tear on it and same thing with the front end We did we did a matte finish front um, fender, front number plate, fork guards. Um, everything came out really cool, all kind of tied together. This, we weren't sure how how the copyright issues would be with Mugen, so um, Troy's idea was to run this Japanese lettering in the Mugen style font, so um, this actually says art in Japanese, so that's the whole reason behind that. Um, Troy had printed that on my gear already, so we just got the art files from him to put onto the graphics, and. Mikey and I came up with these graphics and wanted to keep it pretty simple. Um, run the 101 for Johnny O. So this being my first year at Straight Rhythm, I wanted I wanted to be Johnny O, but Johnny was always number one, and I didn't want it to be my you know first time showing up and show up with number one. I thought that was super lame. So I just asked Johnny like, what was the coolest number that wasn't number one that had some meaning to it? So he said 101. So that's the whole reason we ran the 101. Um, I always remember as number one. So. I don't know. I never really, I was too young back then. I don't even know if I was alive for most of his career, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Johnny O wanted one on one, so that's what we went with. Um, as far as parts go, I mean, uh, Moto stuff absolutely crushed it for us with these billet brakes. They went with the blue banjo nuts and hardware and all that stuff, and um, 
yeah, these guys, I mean, the brakes are unbelievable. Like this is full like factory feeling to me. Like I'm used to, you know, I've been on factory stuff for five years. Their stuff, we measured it all is pretty close to what the factory stuff is, um, if not exactly how it is. So um, then their pegs and just all the little parts that they hooked us up with. Can't thank those guys enough. Um, I know I'm gonna leave some people out on this whole thing, but uh, also CMT with the carbon tank, um, KYB, the extra clamps, just everything that, that made this bike what it was, was was really special to us. Pro Circuit helped us out with a pipe and silencer and obviously Honda with the engine. Huge shout out to those guys. Um, we kind of guessed with what we were gonna do with the carburetor. We went with that Kian carb that I had talked about. We did not have enough time to tune it properly. It actually made really, really good numbers on the dyno. The guys at Honda were kind of questioning it and then when we put on the dyno, they were really surprised by the results and um, they actually got one as a backup too. So yeah, I don't, I don't know how to tune those things and I really didn't expect it to be as hard as it was, but um, those are just the cards we were dealt. We were kind of, like I said, I had only had three weeks on the bike. That's why it took me so long. You guys kept asking me, when are you gonna get on the two-stroke? When are you gonna have two-stroke on, on Supercross? And I really only rode it one day before I went to, to line up at Rebel Straight with them. So only had one day of testing and tuning and we got it pretty good. And then when we showed up, you know, weather conditions are completely different. It was colder out, a little drier out. So trying to fine tune, especially the main jet at that type of situation was, uh, was a lot trickier than we were expecting. So did what we could. Um, actually Mitch Payton over at PC helped us before my last run to try and uh, make it run a little better. And I don't know if like a reed was broken or something like that, but the thing was not running right. That's why I ended up pulling off on my run against Josh Hansen. So ultimately I just showed up wanting to have fun and, and race and, and having limited time to test and tune, limited time to train um, and be on the bike. That was tough. So I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Like next year when I go show up there with this thing, I'll, I'll be a lot more prepared and um, I have a lot more days on it, but I had said that I was gonna go race, so I wanted to put my money where my mouth was and go show up, whether that meant I was gonna get first or just, uh, I don't know, <laughs> just run practice, but we had fun, so that's all that really matters. Another thing, um, when at the end of the series, I was talking about how we didn't really get to film a lot, well, Tommy had come over and helped me, um, if you watched my, I think it was on my channel, uh, the last build video, so he came over, helped me get it buttoned up enough to get it to Honda so they could tune it for me, and we come to find out that my RC valve was actually the um, the mechanisms up here. It was frozen. So this is actually a completely different RC valve than what came stock. Um, Honda luckily had, an, had one laying around, so I didn't have to order one. But yeah, just kind of something that got thrown at us last minute. Tommy was a huge, huge help. Um, he was my mechanic for the event. So he went over the whole bike, dialed it in for me, um, made it as as raceable as it possibly could. Um, like I said before, unfortunately, we didn't have enough testing time to get it completely dialed in, but you know, it is what it is. It was still a, still a good time and still had a, a lot of fun at the race. So now that we've kind of gone over the bike, I'll talk a little bit about the event um, and what it had transpired on Saturday. Um, definitely, uh, I didn't know what to expect when I showed up there. It was just a different, different style of event than I, what I usually raced, obviously. It's bracket racing, head to head. Um, but the whole theme and the whole idea behind it that Red Bull really wanted to imply was to go and have fun and so that was 100% why I showed up and why I wanted to race. Um, obviously, like I'd said uh, in months ago, I'm retiring from racing, so um, to go line up at an event like that, I really just wanted to go have a pressure-free situation and really just like, I don't know, just have fun. Like I just wanted to go line up, race against my friends, um, hang out with my friends and just do it the right way. And um, obviously with no pressure, you can kind of kind of get away with that. Um, usually when I'm at a supercross race, I try and shut out my friends and, and hide away in my in my uh, bunk and, and not talk to anybody. But at this event, I actually, uh, one of my buddies at uh, Enduro Life helped me out with a bus. So I got a bus in my pit. We had so much fun with friends and family stopping by. Um, Mikey and I hired a DJ, our buddy Vince, who absolutely killed it. And uh, the reason we did that was I went there like I said, with three weeks of riding, I didn't know how it was gonna go. Um, if I got, I kinda had it in the back of my mind where if I got sketchy, I wasn't gonna be able to save it. So I kinda had to like ride a fine line of how much I wanted to risk. Um, so I was like, all right, you know, if all else fails, if I, if I get taken out early, then we're gonna have a good time, you know? So we wanted to make it as fun as possible for the fans. Um, and with a company like Red Bull, they were all about it, which I'm super thankful for. My buddy Jeremy who works over there got us like over 40 tickets for friends and family. So 
everybody was welcome. We've had a super good time. Um, if you've never been to the event, I highly suggest you go check it out next year. Um, and that means like flying from other states. I'm telling you it's worth it. It's a good time. It's uh, definitely worth worth showing up and, and uh, it's just so pressure free. Everyone there, all the racers included, like everyone is so laid back. Nobody really like, they care, they wanna go win, but at the same time they don't really like have that huge pressure on them that we're used to and um, can actually kind of let our hair down and talk amongst each other, talk with fans, meet up with everyone and and like I said, just have a good time. So thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, everybody who got us there and uh, made us feel comfortable and welcome. Um, we we definitely enjoyed our time at the Stray Rhythm. So yeah, but um, yeah, the, so the actual race, um, during practice, we, we tried to fine tune the bike. We did what we could. It just like the temperature kept changing and the bike was so finicky with with different, um, like it would start out cold, obviously the engine would be cold. And then as it got up to, you know, running temps after back to back to back runs, it'd start to change the way the bike ran and then the temperature would change. So we we're, we we're just juggling out there, just trying to find what settings were gonna work. Carburetor was giving us the, you know, a heck of a time trying to dial that thing in and it just kept, kept getting this little cutout. If you watch the first run, I'll try and insert a clip right now, but if you watch the first run that I did up against Paul Atelli, um, <laughs> I was hauling in the beginning of it and then I like I was wide open across the tabletops and all of a sudden the bike just cut like I was literally pinned and the bike just cut out and threw me forward and uh, kind of took the wind out of me like I hit my hit my stomach or something on the on the bar or tank or something and and from that point on I was like oh I don't know like I don't know about this like that was the one moment where I was like I'm gl glad I saved that because my shoulder strength definitely isn't there um, but the rest of that run, I was really like struggling to be motivated. And at the last second, I was able to pass Austin back in the whoops. Um, he's definitely a good rider, so I was kind of got lucky there. Maybe he messed up in the whoops or something like that. But run number two, kind of had to ride at like 90%, which is actually really low right now for me because, you know, <laughs> limited time on the bike. I keep saying that, but really just uh, didn't feel comfortable. So I was like, all right, I just got to beat Austin. I'm going to get on the next round. I was assuming I was going to go against Josh. And then the bike in that second round, it just kept cutting out, like kept, it just had like this little stutter spot, like actually felt good on bottom end, but when I get mid to top, it would cut out and it was scaring me. So went over to Mitch, he helped me, like we were literally like, they held the run for us. I think Josh was already in staging and I, I was like scrambling, scrambling. And I was like, all right, we're heading up, go, like I'm sitting up there like sweating bullets thinking like, man, what if this thing cuts out on me again? What if, you know, it's, and I knew I had to be on it to beat Josh. So go over the first three um, little doubles or scrubbing super aggressive and the thing cuts out on me three times. Every time I land, cut out and then go, cut out, go. And went over the wall, cut out on me again. I was like, okay, if it's doing it this consistently, something's not right. I don't know if it was at that point, if it was a jetting problem or us trying to fix the jetting throughout the day had messed something else up, like a reed or I don't know. I haven't turned on the bike apart obviously, so I don't know. At that point, I really just weighed out my options. You know, obviously at that point I knew I couldn't, I wasn't competitive enough to beat Josh. He was on it all day long. So let him have the victory, um, or not let him, he earned the victory for sure. But uh, yeah, I pulled off, I gotta, you know, I gotta be safe. <laughs> and you know, what, I was really like, what's it worth? You know, we, get, we came here, we had a good time, we got to see the fans, bike, er, fans got to see the bike. And um, yeah, from then on, I was like, all right, like we're gonna make up for it right now. We went back to the pit, I rinsed off in the bus real quick and um, kind of to get everyone's attention. We did some burnouts on the bike. <laughs> Everyone came over and uh, really started enjoying the, the DJ. And then uh, about an hour later or so, I did it again, did some burnouts. I'll show you the tire. So this, uh, this was our main attraction right here. <laughs> we, uh, this thing's all lipped up. I can almost take this thing to Pismo. But uh, yeah, roasted the Dunlop, had some fun, got some, uh, some laughs and some High five from the fans, the, they seem to really enjoy it. So if you were there, thank you guys for swinging by. And also, Red Bull, again, was stoked with uh, with our little pit party. So, hyped up the fans. Um, at one point, I forgot the race was still going on, but uh, we got to watch the finals. And then we just got to enjoy the fans' uh, presence even more and, and uh, make sure that everyone was having a good time until security kicked us out. <laughs> but uh, definitely shut down the pits. And uh, like I said before, if you guys have ever thought about going to Red Bull Australia, then I highly suggest checking it out. Definitely one of the most memorable nights of my life, and I didn't even win. I like literally just showed up and and uh, we we did what we could, and then we had a good time. So um, I hope to guys see you guys in there next year. Um, 
still working on a few other things uh, in my life with uh, with future plans and future builds. Definitely gonna continue the whole YouTube thing. Follow along on YouTube, Instagram. Uh, I gotta thank BTO for letting me host on their channel and helping me out with all the parts that they supplied me with for this bike. And uh, Mikey for his help with building the bike. And I don't even wanna try and list everyone else. Also a huge thank you to Tommy Harris, who was my mechanic, who you guys probably saw in the last video. He was a huge, huge help, both uh, at home and at the event. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I can't wait. I'm gonna get this suspension tuned for some outdoor riding and, and do some outdoor riding on it now and hopefully get the engine all sorted out and and uh, go make some cool videos. That's like the, the main thing. I'm, I'd love to take this thing to go do some races this year. And then we got like a day in the dirt coming up pretty soon. I'd love to go attend that. Um, I definitely wanna do Mammoth next year. Um, yeah, and Troy Lee's got my back, so I'm excited about that. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks you guys for following along in this cool journey that was the CR250 build. And uh, now that it's here, we can have some fun with it. Obviously Red Bull is our first stop, but now we can uh, go do whatever we want. So thank you guys again, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on and, and follow along as we uh, just have some more fun riding motorcycles. Thank you. I, I, I